started. You know, obviously the, the, the word of the day these days is flexibility. Okay. Um, so let me check. I, I, I have here on the notes that homework 9.1 was graded. I'm not sure if the TA was able to get it finished right before class. No, but the solution is posted to homework 9.1 um, as well as homework 9.2. I'm looking here and I'm seeing that most people turned in homework 9.2. Um, but yeah, that was due because the solution is already live. So, so maybe you can submit it in the next couple minutes, but the solution's already up. So, uh, so yeah, um, let me refresh that. Okay. All right, so uh, one other thing, I did want to show you the statistics on the course evals and the CLO surveys. Um, most of you have completed them, but if you haven't done that, please do so. Now, like for the course evals, if I get a 100% response rate, I'll just give everybody the, uh, the, the bonus points, the same with the CLO survey. But if I don't get 100%, then I need your, your screen capture uploads or I won't know who to give the, the bonus points to. And so, for instance, on course eval, I've got 19 students that have completed it, but I only have 17 of you that have uploaded the screenshot. So, um, you know, if, if you don't, uh, if you don't upload, if, if I don't get 100% response, I don't know who did what. So for those two of you who completed the course eval, if you haven't uploaded your screenshot, do so so that I... Uh, know to give you your points. And if everybody does the course eval, then everybody gets the points. Same thing with the CLO survey. Okay, um, that's pretty much it in terms of logistics. Let's talk about the final because that's why we're here. Uh, so schedule. The uh, For us, I guess, I don't know if, if you want to say we drew, drew the, the long shot or the short shot, however you feel about it, but our final is fairly early in finals week. We we are one of the first time slots. Our exam opens on Monday, uh, and it opens at 10.15 a.m., which is pretty much right at um, class time, uh, and it closes at 12.15 p.m. So that's a two-hour time slot, but again, I'm, I, this is just another exam to me, so I'm not designing the exam to be a two-hour long exam. I'm designing it to be 50 minutes long. Um, I will uh, open at 10.15 a.m. the... Uh, submission form as well for the PDF. Uh, I have that that'll set to close at 115, but um, I've been teaching this class a, you know, a number of years now, and I don't know that I've ever really had an instance on the final where it was a time crunch. Uh, it's always been one that, uh, I mean, I, usually most people are done in an hour, let alone the two hours. I mean, you can obviously take the, the full two hours, but it's never really been uh, much in the way of a time crunch. Um, same story on the operation and the approved materials. Uh, it's a forced completion exam. So once you start it, you got to finish it in one setting. Uh, it's a timed exam with the auto submit feature. So once the exam opens, it's timed for 120 minutes. Then after those 120 minutes, it'll save and submit your work. So make sure it's good. All the questions will appear all at once. Uh, and it gives you a chance to look at all the questions and review your response before you submit. Again, you can use any of the material that, that we put, basically your approved materials are what's on Blackboard. So uh, the, uh, the book, the notes in the class, uh, the lecture notes, the recordings, the homework solutions from the class. You can't uh, give or receive aid from another individual, but anything that's on Blackboard uh, is fair game. Um, as for the, the format, um, it'll be very similar to what we've done in previous exams, four to five uh, conceptual questions and three computational problems. Do me a favor and again, type out an answer for every question, even the computational ones. It does help out with the grading. Um, and uh, I'll say that I think that there's probably one question where that'll be difficult and that's okay. Just again, you know, my, uh, my, um, uh, you know, my, my rule that I've said before on previous exams, you know, show as much work as you can. Um, and I'm going to pull up some suggestions from previous exams here in a second. Um, but yeah, show your work, um, you know, show as much work as possible and make sure you answer, you know, every question. Okay, here's the topics on the exam. So uh, our exam is going to cover the RISA uh, topics. It's going to cover matrix analysis and it's going to cover the stuff that we've done this week. Now, when I say RISA, I want to be crystal clear. I'm not going to make you do RISA analyses. 
And the main reason I'm not going to make you do that is just because of technology. I mean, uh, I know that there are a number of you that have Macs, and I know that was a problem. And I don't want that to be a barrier on the final, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to ask you conceptual questions uh, about RISA. So I do want you to understand the basics of RISA operation. So, you know, like what's a material, what's a section set, you know, how do you define the geometry, you know, joints, boundary conditions, members, pinning the ends of members to, um, to, to generate, you know, like a truss model or whatnot. Uh, how do you load, you know, joint loads, point loads, distributed loads, so basic load cases, load combinations, make sure you understand all of that, that you understand processing, you know, running the model and then determining the results, the re reactions, the deflections, the shear moment diagram, make sure that you understand that stuff. Uh, in terms of matrix analysis, understand what a stiffness matrix is, what it represents, what those values are, um, be able to assemble. That's a really big deal, you know, assembling elements into a system level matrix. Make sure that you can identify the degrees of freedom for a, 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 a structure. So, you know, um, two per bar element, four per truss element, you, you, you know, that's how many are in an element, how many uh, are in a structure, and that's before the boundary conditions are applied and after the boundary conditions are applied, you know, knocking out your rows and columns. Um, make sure you know your difference uh, between you know, like what a local coordinate system is, what a global coordinate system is, and that you can un just basically demonstrate a general understanding of the process. Um, for the additional topics, make sure that you could utilize and or derive aids in performing structural analysis, and make sure that you understand tributary area, which is what we talked about uh, on Wednesday. Uh, as for the remaining stuff in the presentation, this is just you know the RESA process you know, building a model, the basics, the things to watch out for. Um, and then there's the process that I went through with assigning materials and section sets. Um, and I just screen capped a lot of this from the previous notes. Uh, here's some important terms and definitions uh, related to matrix algebra. So what is a symmetric matrix? What's the difference between a singular and an invertible matrix? What's an orthogonal matrix? Um, we have uh, commands for matrix algebra in both Excel and MATLAB. Um, we have the flow chart for the matrix analysis process. Um, and then we have, you know, we get a little bit more into the nitty gritty with matrix analysis so that you know terminology, you understand units, you know, your sign convention. I went ahead and threw the bar element on this slide as well. So K bar is just EA over L, uh, and then your one, one, minus one, minus one uh, uh, pattern. Uh, I also threw the 2D truss element in here. Uh, so that you would have those expressions. I, I actually didn't throw anything in here in regards to tributary area and analysis aids, because I don't really know that there's a lot of like super detailed formulas to go about. I mean, you kind of have to know the, the bar element formula and whatnot for uh, for you know matrix analysis, but for tributary area, as long as you just know how to identify it, then, then I think you're good. Um, that's all I have for... Uh, you know, this introductory stuff, the floor is yours for questions. Um, could you go through a brief uh, matrix analysis for the uh for a truss element? Um, I, are you talking about a full-blown start-to-finish problem? Uh, let's see. No, I wouldn't want to put you through that. Sorry. I, I just, uh, the generalized well, process. I don't know. Maybe. Well, the, so um, let me say a couple things about that. Number one, I'm not going to make you do a full-blown, like, start-to-finish uh, analysis of a truss on uh, uh, a finite element analysis of a truss on the exam I won't do that so that that's the first thing I would point out um, let me let me answer that question a little differently and, and you'll you'll understand what I'm doing here in a second let me stop the share and I'll, and I'll I'll answer it a bit indirectly but but I think the um, the overall message will be clear okay uh, Let's see. 
eight. I think it's 8.2. Okay, so let me walk through the solution to the bar problem that we did, okay? And if you understand this process, the trust analysis process is the same thing, just a little bit more, okay? So let me sort of give you an idea. Let me move this out of the way. You go away. Okay. So let me pull up the assignment. All right, so here was the assignment and you were to assemble this. So you were to solve this, this system. That was the, the homework 8.2. All right, so like let's go through the process, right? So there's five joints, five nodes, and then there are six elements. So each element has an element level stiffness matrix. And so the first thing that you have to do is you have to assemble it, okay? So, for instance, if we look at element number three, element number three goes from two to four, right? So, if you look at element number three, you know, right here, okay, so that's element number three going from two to four. So, in the big old K matrix, those, L, those terms are going to go in rows and columns two and four because that's where that member connects, right? So, um, you know, the full blown stiffness matrix is going to be five by five. And how do you get the five by five term? You just take each of the members one by one, place those uh, terms where they go in the big old stiffness matrix, and then you add them up. Whoop. Then you add them up. Okay. And adding them up on a term by term basis gives you a symmetric K matrix with those terms placed where they need to be. Okay. Now, what do you do from there? Okay, well, from there, you knock out the rows and columns associated with the degrees of freedom that are fixed. So you get a reduced stiffness matrix and a reduced force vector. And so invert this reduced K matrix, multiply it by the force vector, boom, you've got the displacements. And then once you got the displacements, take your K matrix for each of those members form a displacement vector for each of those members, and then determine the internal forces, just K times delta for each one of those. Last thing you can do is do the support reactions, and you can do that a couple of different ways. You can either um, assemble these, like assemble these into a, a, a five element force vector, or you can just take a big old K matrix times a big old displacement vector. Either one will work. And so when it's all said and done, you get the, the entire answer, okay? Now, I know I'm not talking about trusses, but up until now, are you with me with this process? Because if you understand this process, adding the complexity with trusses really isn't all that much, but the yeah, understanding yeah, yeah. the base process is critical. Okay. so. If you understand that, then let's go back to this part right here, okay? With this part, what you're doing is you're taking the element stiffness matrix and plugging it into the big old system matrix. With trusses, you do the exact same thing. The only difference is that before you plug these into the big old stiffness matrix, you have to rotate them, okay? So, what you do, what we did in homework 8.3 um, is here was, you know, a couple stiffness, uh, here, here were a couple of members. What we did is we said, okay, here's the local stiffness matrix. Here's the rotation matrix or the transformation matrix. And now we'll do T transpose KT in order to get this. And this is what we would assemble. Everything else is exactly the same. The only thing is there's a little bit of a step in between in order to get these. That's really the only difference. So what we would do for this problem, like let me let me pull up the homework for this one. So, oh, I don't have a picture of it. Oh, well, that's okay. So let's take these two stiffness matrix. So these are two members, right? So member number one frames into uh, degrees of freedom one, two, three, and four, and then member number two goes into three, four, five, and six. So you'd have a big old K matrix and just put each of those terms, you know, one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, and then the next one would be three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, and then just assemble that the same way. The only, again, the only difference is you can't just take this, you know, original matrix and assemble it. You got to rotate them so that they're both apples to apples. That's the only difference between a bar analysis and a truss analysis. Everything else is, you know, the same thing. You can assemble the K matrices, knock out the rows and columns associated with the boundary conditions, form a force vector based on the loads, invert the K times the force vector to get the displacements, break up a displacement vector, take a displacement vector times this, you know, to get a force vector and then assemble that and boom, there's your reactions. Uh, and if you take each of those force vectors and rotate them to local coordinates, then you get the internal forces. That's pretty much it. Now, I don't want to just say, oh, like it's easy. I want to make sure I'm answering your question though. So did that clear it up yeah, a little? Thank you. Nope, no problem. Oh, I, I'm getting off easy. There's got to be more than that. So on the exam, you're going to ask about the concept question related to resub and not ask a problem to be done in resub, correct? That's correct, yes. And on an exam like this, I probably would normally do that, but there's too many people here with Max, and I'm not going to – I don't want I, – I mean, if we were in person, then this would kind of be a non-issue because we could do this in a computer lab and it, would, it would be a, wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm not going to do that. Um, um, give me one sec. I see a question from Mr. Ena. Hold on. Come on. Okay, so uh, Mr. Enot asked about the uh, the schedule. So the exam will open at twelve or at ten fifteen on Monday morning, and it'll close at twelve fifteen on uh, on Monday. But again, the exam is designed to be fifty minutes long, it, and just like all of the others, uh, and the upload form will close at one fifteen. But again, if I was a betting man, most of you will have the exam done well before the twelve fifteen rolls around. In fact, if I was a betting 1215 rolls around I'm gonna have most of the exams done and the PDFs already uploaded just from like past experience I mean, obviously I haven't had past experience doing it online like this but this exam is really of no more uh, comparable difficulty it's it, it's not any more difficult than previous exams and what I found you know just in past experience is that usually the students get this one done a bit faster Did that answer your question? Uh, okay, good. Um, will there be any problems that require us to, uh, I'm trying to see how to phrase this, but um, attach a question in the exam requires us to attach an actual answer problem? Like, do we can't type it or select an answer, but we need to attach like a picture or a Word document? Um, uh, let me think about how to answer that. So I'll answer that a couple of different ways. Um, I have no problem given, you know, your work, like, like, so some of the, the stuff that we do here might not be easy to type out. And I understand that. And so that's, that's why you have the, the, the PDF that you upload uh, as well. Um, I have no problem if, you know, um, let me give, I tell you what, let me give you a steel design example because I, I, I know that's outside the class, but I feel like I can freely talk about steel design and, and not, you know, compromise a question on the exam. So I might ask you a question in steel design, like why are, you know, bolt holes, um, a certain, why, why do we use a certain dimension larger than the diameter of the bolt uh, when doing net area calculations? And your answer, like you could type it out, 
but it might also be easier to just draw the picture and go like, here's why. And so I have no problem if you say something like C scanned work and I go to the scanned work and it's like, okay, now I get why. Like I have no problem with that at all. And I, and that's been the case even when we do the exams, you know, face to face, like I'll have a short answer question. And then instead of writing out a sentence, um, I'll have students just draw a picture and the picture, you know, there's, you know, the old adage that a picture is worth a thousand words and that the picture might actually explain the, um, the, the, your answer better than, than the words could. And I, I have no problem with, with that approach. So that would be one answer to the question. The other answer to the question is, um, if we have a matrix analysis problem and you would like to upload a spreadsheet in conjunction with scanned work, I don't have a problem with that either. I don't think that it would be terribly necessary for this exam, but I don't have a problem if you decide to upload a spreadsheet. Now, with the exam, um, the way it's structured, I don't know that um, your old spreadsheets would help, like they're, they're new problems. So you, if you're gonna go the spreadsheet route, you'd probably need to just make your own spreadsheet as opposed to um, trying to use an old one. And I say that not from a, a, um, like a, like an academic integrity perspective. I say that from just a logistics perspective, it'll just be easier to make your own than it'll be to try and, you know, like fit a square peg into a round hole with your, your old spreadsheets. Does that make sense? I believe so. And did, did that answer your question though? Cause I, again, I'm always worried that I just go off on a tangent and then in the end you're, it's like he said a bunch of stuff, but I don't know if that, that helped. <laughs> well, it gives me an idea of what can, what, what can be done and what cannot be done. <laughs> yeah. Because I like what you asked us to do on our uh, course eval on the extra credit. That was like what I'm thinking of. of uh, oh, like a screen capture. Yeah. Because I think on the RISA questions, you could have it said you can emphasize what are we talking about on concept wise. True, I um, I I don't think that'll be an issue with with the questions on the exam, and I don't really want to say more than that because then I'll start talking about. Well, here's what I'm asking you on the exam. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, you're fine. I just I what I don't I. I I, what you're talking about, I just don't think you're going to have a problem with that on the exam. And I don't really want to go further into that because if I did, I'd be telling you like, well, here's what I'm going to ask you on the final and you'll, you'll go, oh, okay. You know, but then you'll know what I'm asking you on the final. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I think I have one more question here, but I think that's been to me. Take care of me. Um, so on, so how are you I'm trying to make, how to describe this? Um, how are you going to base your point, your war points on the question? How is your grading going to be determined? Because I imagine we show our work and get a correct answer, but I imagine on some of these problems we might have a long step, step by step, and we might make a hiccup. Well, I don't, I mean, that's a fair question. I don't know that I would do it really any differently than I've done the previous exams. I mean, um, I've always taken the, the, you know, that correct for data approach where, you know, if the entire problem is right, except for, you know, that should have been a four instead of a six, then I'll take off for that mistake and not, you know, the final answer being off. Um, and in terms of the uh, exam as a whole, I mean, or the problem as a whole, if you're off in your response, then, then I just have to, you know, take a look at it a bit holistically and say, okay, this problem's worth 20 points. I think he or she earned 12 at, based on their response. And, and I mean, the, the two points I would, I would just sort of emphasize is, is I, I really, do my best to ensure that the deductions I'm making are clear and proportional. So I'm, I'm not one to say that this is a tiny mistake that's 78 points off. I've, I've never done that. And I'd, 
and and I and I, I won't do that now. Um, as for how much each problem's worth, it's it, usually the way I figure that out is, is a function of time. Like I take the exam, and um, that you know, remember that that rule of three, and I I literally time you know how long it takes me to do each problem, and that's sort of how I determine the weights of the problems. So um, I use uh, uh, what is it uh, the if you watch people speed run uh, games on Twitch and they use live split, the timer to, to do their splits on their games, that's kind of how I determine how much each problem is worth is I'll do problem two and okay, problem, let's say the entire exam took me 20 minutes to complete and problem two took 10 minutes. Well, that's 50% of the exam. And so that's how much that problem's worth. That's, that's how I, I determine the, the weights, you know, uh, for each problem and I, and I deduct you know, pretty accordingly. Grading for me takes a pretty long time because of that. I uh, I always ensure that I'm that I'm I'm trying to be fair in the deductions. Did that yeah, answer the question? There? Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, at least the problems don't involve sticking your nose in the corner between two walls until you fall through the a, uh, the floor. There's a story there. <laughs> Well, that, that, you're talking what? about video game speed runs, man. That's uh, one of the techniques that. Uh, you oh, you're talking game. about clipping through, yeah, clipping through walls, and <laughs> I thought you were talking about an exam problem that you had, and I'm like, what Sorry, class was that? <laughs> that? Any other questions? We've got, we still got plenty of time. Well, I, that's, I, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. I, uh, I'll say this, I mean, and, and I, I, I don't want to come across as like I'm leading you astray by saying this, but I've been teaching this class for a long time, and I think of the three exams that I teach in this class, or, or in this class, that the third one is largely regarded as the easiest. Um, I don't want to, to, you know, make that sound like it's a cakewalk. I mean, like, I don't, I don't want, what I don't want to have happen is I say that all oh, the exams are breeze and then you take the exam, like, oh, I thought that was going to be easy. Like, no, I mean, I, I just, uh, comparatively, I don't think that, uh, I, let me say this. I don't think anybody's ever said that the third exam was the hardest, um, you know, across the board. Um, I think that's fair. Usually the the running for which exam is the hardest in this class is either the first or the second exam. And most people say the second exam is the hardest because it's got, you know, the influence lines and the deflections and, and all that. Like the first exam has a lot on it, but it's very, it's very linear. You know, it's everything going up equals everything going down. So here's the force and the trust member and whatnot. Any other questions? We got time. Y'all are letting me off easy. Well, I have a bad habit of asking too many questions during class and not letting anyone else ask questions. Or answer them. Well, I mean, I mean, let, let me say this, all right, and and <laughs> this is a little bit more difficult to to uh, uh, get across virtually as opposed to in person. But I'll tell you what it's like from my end when I'm in class and you've got a class with you know 20, 30 people in it, and you you're teaching a topic and and somebody asks a question. Um, you'll undoubtedly find the look on a couple students' faces change, and their look basically says, I wanted to hear the answer to that question too, so I'm glad this person asked it. Um, 
So don't be shy about asking questions. I mean, the way I look at it, like, you know, you're, you're putting money on the table to learn structural analysis from me. So if there's, if there's something you're unsure about, like get your money's worth, you know? Um, by the way, on the note of the, our work, um, how comp I'm assuming you want us to do the best short and effective method in the problem, correct? Say, say that again. Um, on the hold, on. did you someone get an email or is it just me? <laughs> oh, never mind, it's me. But I was going to ask on our work that we have to show. So we have to show each step by step, but do we need to do the most effective method or we can use whatever method we can do? Because I remember on the exam two, one of the problems I had was that I went a long way on one of the problems when I show it short. So well, it's, it's, it's not a matter of should. Um, there, there is something to be said about um, user comfort. So like, for example, um, you have a triangle that's a three, four, five triangle, right? And I want, you know, here's the angle, okay? And I want to know what's the cosine of that angle, okay? Now, there's a couple ways of going about that. One way of going about that is saying, okay, I need to use like an inverse tangent of three over four to get the actual angle and then take the cosine of that. Or another way is to just recognize Sakatoa adjacent over hypotenuse, and that's the answer. Um, and both methods work, but one method's faster, requires less button punches on the calculator, and gives you a, the, the same answer. Um, my approach is like when I when I've done you know these types of is just to try and keep it simple and to use the simplest approach possible. Now, that being said, I know that everybody in this class comes from different, you know, uh, uh, math backgrounds. You went to different schools. You, you had different teachers in high school and college for, for your math courses. And so you might look at this problem a little differently than I would. As long as we both get that the cosine of this angle is three-fifths, it doesn't really matter how you go about it and how I go about it as long as we get the right answer. So I can navigate um, if you're using a different approach, but you're still getting the right answer, that's fine. But what ends up happening with not just structural analysis, but really any involved engineering problem is the more involved your method, the more room there is for error. You know, if I do a problem in five steps and you do a problem in 12 steps, that's 12 possibilities for error, right? So it, um, that doesn't mean that your approach is wrong. You know, if you get, you know, X equals four and I get X equals four, then we both got the right answer. Um, but when you introduce more workload, you introduce more, you know, room for error. And so to be clear, I don't care which way you go about the problem. I'm not somebody who says you must do it my way. I, 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 no, that doesn't matter. Um, what matters is just that you get the right answer. However you do that, that you're comfortable with is completely fine. My, when, at, when I went through the, the statistics on teams for each exam, I said, here are my suggestions for future exams, not you must do this. You, you can do it however you want. I do not want to be somebody who dictates to you, you will do it my way or the highway. This isn't a transportation class. That was a transportation joke. Highways. That was a bad transportation joke too, I know. It's all bad jokes here in structural analysis. <laughs> Side note, the game you posted on Teams is great. I spent like three. <laughs> I could beat the final level. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's worthy of a, an entry on Steam or anything. <laughs> You'd be surprised what they let on Steam. <laughs> Um, but like any exam, you want us to be more like, I know it's two hours, but you want us to be time effective here because like on a speed run, for example, as you said, people are trying to get the quickest time possible, but you can make a lot of errors if you go too quick. Well, <clears throat> there's something to be said about like taking a step back and just looking at the problem and planning out your um, planning out your response. So, like, here's an example, and I, I used this with a friend recently. Like, if you're remodeling your kitchen, um, you could do that a couple of different ways. You could um, sit down, you know, with you know some some cat or some paper or some, whatever and start itemizing okay this is what i want to do i want to replace the counter i want to replace the cabinets i want a new sink uh, i'm gonna you know relay out the room i'm gonna you know redo some electric and you know list everything out and then based on that develop an inventory of here's what i need to buy and then go to lowe's or home depot or whatnot and buy it and then get it home and then set out a plan that's one way of remodeling your kitchen another way of remodeling your kitchen is just um, go to Lowe's, buy a bunch of stuff, come home, get a sledgehammer, start knocking down walls, and then say, I've got a bunch of stuff here. Let's make a kitchen out of it. Now, at the end of the day, you might still get a kitchen, but I think the first process is going to be a lot smoother. You're going to run into less errors. The point I'm making is, is Sometimes I, I know that you're on a timed exam and you might feel rushed. Like I need to just start doing work. I need to just start summing forces and summing moments. And I need to just get something on the paper. But um, sometimes it's worth it to just take a step back and go, okay, let's, let's take exam two. All right. Uh, we've got a, a, a trust deflection. Okay. So we know we need to do a real analysis. We know we need to do a virtual analysis and then we know we need to plug it into the method of virtual work. Okay. So what were we given? We've got the table. It's got the E, the A's, and the L's on it. We've got that. We've got the real structure. It gave us the reaction, so we can do this, and then da 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 da, da. It's almost worth it to just sort of take a step back and develop that plan in your head so that when you start doing the work, you know, you're not just putting stuff on paper because uh, it, if you um, feed into that, like, desire uh, to, you know, beat the clock and just get something on the paper, you know, you've got a problem on the exam and now you just filled the paper with a bunch of stuff. And now it's like, now I've got an even bigger mess and I don't even know where to go from here. So take a second and plan the problem out and it'll go smoother. Promise. Like one of the, one of the suggestions I made on exam two was I think a lot of people fed into that a little bit. And one of the things they did on some of their method of joints analyses is they said, I'm not going to draw out the joints. I'm not going to actually take my pencil and draw the, you know, the, take the diagonal and split it up into horizontal and vertical. I'm just going to do it in my head and, you know, here it is. And I think that by not actually taking the time to draw out the figures and draw out the, the, um, the problems and, 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 and put the schematics, you might have thought you were saving time, but because you didn't have any frame of reference for the math that you were doing, it actually introduced more errors. And it made probably your exam calcs even longer. So by taking the time and just sort of doing it right, if you will, um, it actually makes the exam go smoother. So, it, again, it's not me telling you how to do the exam. It's just, you know, some suggestions. I went off on a tangent again. I'm sorry. Let me ask this. Are there any other like big ticket questions we can address before we close it? Because I, I do have a couple of logistical items I want to mention before we close it for today.
All right. Well, let me let me mention a couple. Um, oh, hold on. How do you feel about? <laughs> uh, I don't know enough about it. That's the honest truth. I and I mean I might have heard about it, but I don't really. I don't know. What is it? <laughs> hold on. Oh, oh, I, I know what you're talking. Is this this matrix thing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. That I'm kind of. Yeah, I'm kind of in that boat myself, you know. I mean, yeah, I'll just leave it. At that. <laughs> I I don't know what what you're going to. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. We'll 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 see how it gets past beta. Um, let me mention a couple logistical items before we close it out for the day and for the semester. So first off, um. Uh, in terms of next semester, so uh, I haven't looked on the roster recently, but I know that a lot of you were planning on taking steel design next semester. I do think that you'll find that steel design is a is a really valuable class. It's really different from this class. This class does definitely have a, a theoretical flair to it because it's very mathematical. It's, you know, there's a lot of, you know, analytical models that you're solving. Um, Steel design is not that. It is very practical and very, um, uh, uh, you know, I would say in your face, real world stuff. Um, the question Mr. Blizzard posted in chat was one I was, that was actually my, my next point was about the coupon code. Uh, I have requested the coupon code already, but I haven't gotten it myself. I can tell you that the moment that I get it, you'll get it. Um, we will not need the manual until probably like lecture five or six, I'm thinking. And uh, that is like end of the second week because next semester we start our first days on Wednesday. So um, uh, it, it, you, you won't need it, you know, on day one. Um, but uh, as soon as I uh, get it, I will distribute it to the course which brings up the, the legit point I was making. If you are planning on taking steel design, but you haven't registered yet, I would register for it simply because you'll be on the email list for the coupon code. Um, again, as, as I mentioned, uh, as I'll, I'll mention in the email and I might've mentioned before, that coupon code is for us at Marshall. So that is for us. Don't distribute that online or anything. That will, that will be bad. That will be bad news. Um, uh, but I, I'd love to have y'all in there. It's a, it's a really good class. I think you'll you'll really enjoy it uh, if you're interested. Um, a couple other items. So uh, logistics for again for this class, the attendance grades other than today are will be complete. I'll do that right at the as class ends. Uh, the homeworks, uh, all the solutions are now available on Blackboard, and you all have the at home game, so you can. Um, determine your grades. The TA should get the homeworks, I think, graded today. Uh, and if not, maybe, you know, into the weekend or whatnot, but we'll try and get that done uh, as soon as possible. The exam, uh, it will do it Monday. And then my goal is I'm probably going to try and grade it either Monday or Tuesday because I'd like to just, you know, knock it out. Um, I will develop a similar, you know, exam report and whatnot, and we'll, we'll do that the, the same way. Um, Two other points before we call it. One, the course evals and the CLO surveys. If you have not done that yet, please do so. It really does help out um, when we do our assessment at the end of the semester. It helps us uh, determine, you know, uh, what we need to do to improve the class from semester to semester. You know, this is the first time we've offered structural analysis virtually, completely virtually. And so, you know, the, as a result, I basically reprepped the class from scratch. And so I know that there's... Uh, there's room to improve, and I, and I really do appreciate the, the feedback. Um, on a final note, let me say this, and I said this to my, my 452 class, and I'm going to say this to all of my others because I really do mean this. 
Um, and I hope that I don't come across as super sappy, uh, but, but that I come across as genuine. I am really proud of you, uh, of, of every student in this class. This is not easy. I know that, that this has been a challenging semester, um, not just for you, but for us as well. Um, and, and it certainly tested my limits uh, as to what I thought was possible. I didn't think really it was possible to teach structural analysis um, like this. It's a, it, to me, I, I've, I've always, you know, enjoyed the the one-on-one the -on -one interaction and, and um, it, it's been tough not being able to see the light bulb turn on, uh, you know, when we're talking about topics. But I'm looking at your work and I'm looking at, you know, the 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 your your um, performance on the exams and I'm thinking wow you guys are really doing an excellent job and if I'm being honest I don't know that I could have done this if I was in your shoes I mean and I'm I'm being serious um, I took online classes when I was an undergrad you know here and there but you know waking up one day and realizing that my entire semester had moved online and now I have to learn these really complex engineering topics, you know, in my living room <laughs> or in my, my bedroom alone uh, with a laptop, that, that's, that's not easy. And, and I know it's not easy and you all have done an, an excellent job and I couldn't be prouder of you. Um, I, uh, I, I know for a fact that any engineering firm DOH, Army Corps, whatever, they'd be lucky to have you because you all have stepped up and shown a work ethic that is well beyond your years in maturity. And, and, and on top of that, I know it's been, you know, just stressful just in general. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we, we I, mean, I know we've all had, you know, stress added on our personal lives and, you know, and whatnot. And so again, I'm really proud of you. You you all have 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 knocked it out of the park in a way that I didn't. I, I don't think I, I could have done. And so, you know, you know, really, my hats off to you. Um, with that, uh, that's probably. I think that's pretty much all I have. Um, uh, I'll. Um, <laughs> well, I try and not do that. I I I uh, I did my best. Um, uh, with that, um, so in other than the exam reports and you know emails and stuff like that, this will probably be the last time that, that you hear from me before the um, uh, the end of the semester. So I just want to uh, wish you all a uh, you know best of luck on your uh, exam in here and, and exams uh, in your other courses. I um, I hope everybody has a chance to. Uh, uh, get some well-deserved <laughs> relaxation over this uh, winter break. Um, we have a little bit of a longer winter break, um, so take advantage of it and, and get some rest in and come recharged uh, for the uh, uh, for the spring semester. That's all I have, everybody. Again, it's it's uh, it's been a, uh, uh, an interesting semester, but it's been an honor, and uh, I'll I hope to see many of you next semester in steel design. That's all I have, everybody. I will see you all hopefully in January. You are quite welcome. <laughs>